Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm very excited to finally share this new country guide with you. It was requested quite a while ago, I must say. I have been working very hard on it and I'm really satisfied uh, with the results. Moreover, this time you will be getting two guides instead of one, because in the upcoming weeks I will also release a fascist USA version of this guide, which will offer some incredible results and it will be the perfect starting point uh, to go for a full world conquest. Now if that sounds interesting, then this is the right video for you. Now before we start, let me just say a couple of things. This strategy is very consistent, but there is a little bit of RNG, and we will be using a couple of tricks to make the USA even more powerful. So make sure to follow the video very carefully. If you have any doubts, uh, feel free to ask, you can do so in the comment section, but I would also recommend uh, joining our Discord to meet our amazing community. Also, remember that I always upload uh, the unedited version for all of my guides. You can find it in the description of the video, together with the focus and research priorities. Finally, if you have been following the channel and enjoying my content, please do not forget to like the video and subscribe. It will really help the channel grow faster, which means I will be able to dedicate more time to it and make even more content for you guys. Now that's really all for the introduction, so let's start with the initial setup for Democratic USA. If you're watching the unedited version, I will not mention, I will not talk uh, when uh, covering researches and focuses because this makes the editing a bit easier. So that's why I don't usually talk much while doing other stuffs. Uh, I'm entirely alone working on the channel, so these, uh, these things uh, can be quite time consuming. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the, in the comments. Also, I apologize if I repeat uh, things twice from time to time. I, you know, English is not my first language, so... It's tough sometimes. All right. All right, let's start by using our free civilian factories. What we are going to do is we are going to build full infrastructures and then full military factories in Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Minnesota and Louisiana. So you start with infrastructures and then you go with military factories in the same exact places. In terms of uh, military production, uh, we are going for 5 uh, to infantry equipment, uh, 3 to support equipment, 1 uh, to tower artillery, and then we add 1 for civilian trains uh, and we remove it from the basic small airframes. Something like uh, this. Now in terms of naval production I always leave complete freedom to my viewers because I'm not a master of the navy but what I usually do is uh, I decrease uh, the uh, factories assigned to all uh, ships to one but what I usually do is I build an infinite amount of uh, cruisers and uh, early cruisers early destroyers sorry and early destroyers but I lower their priority to the minimum, together with all of the uh, ships which require chromium. And I also decrease the amount of factories assigned to these, uh, to these ships. I bring them to the bottom and then I increase the uh, dockyards assigned to the other ones to the maximum. To all of them except for the chromium ones. So only these three should be left at the bottom with one dockyard, everything else with two of them on infinite production with max dockyards. If you follow these, uh, uh, then the rest of the guide will make sense in terms of naval production. But if you want to do something different, uh, you're entirely free to do so.
Then what we're going to do is we're going to decommission uh, the garrison and uh, the National Guard divisions because we're not going to use them. And we're going to train uh, the maximum amount of infantry divisions, which is uh, 27, and to deploy them in uh, Washington. We're also going to gather all of our divisions and we're going to change them all to infantry divisions. And then we're going to split them into two arms, uh, two armies. With one marshal, the marshal is going to be Douglas MacArthur, and Attention. the two generals will be Omar Bradley Attention. and Mark Clark. What we're going to do with these armies, we're going to change the motorization priority to maximum. Uh, we're going to make them execute uh, aggressively battle plans, and then we're going to give them a full back line from New York to Washington so they don't run out of supplies. Uh, and we're going to train them. Uh, now, with the United States, since we will have an insanely powerful industry, I'm not going to shift-click uh, on the training command. Shift-clicking it uh, means they will only train until they are at regular, and then they will stop training. But I will just let them train forever, so we keep getting uh, army experience from it. We're going to do the same exact thing for what concerns planes, so I usually select them from here. Uh, we don't care much about uh, the carrier ones, uh, but all the other ones, we're going to gather them all in uh, the state of uh, New England, I guess, or in New York, whatever. In this bigger airport, uh, in this bigger airport. And then we're going to press on uh, pilot exercises, again, not shift-clicking it, uh, so we keep training them for air experience. Same exact thing again for the Navy, we're going to gather all of our navies. Uh, into just one, the one which is already in here, and then we're going to assign them an admiral and we're going to just train them forever. Now, and with this, we can consider our initial setup done. I always make a save when, I when I'm done with my initial setup, just in case uh, I don't need to do all this stuff again. And we can start with the early game of the United States, which is a bit boring, I must be honest with you. So we will not be doing a lot until uh, World War II starts, but we need, we need to prepare properly in order to be fully ready for World War II. So what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to wait for the first focus uh, to complete. Until then, uh, we can just look at the game, uh, maybe pick researches from time to time, we don't need to do that much. Uh, and that's because uh, with the several debuffs that you have with the United States, uh, you actually don't gain any political power. So we will need to rely on focuses to get uh, our political power. Now what happens with the Congress uh, is uh, a bit RNG related. We'll try to reduce the RNG to a minimum, but there is a bit of RNG in there. Okay, we completed our first focus, which very conveniently gave us 150 political power, which we're going to use right away to pick the financial expert. Uh, minus 15% consumer good factories is huge with the United States, since we have a lot of uh, factories. Next, once again, we're waiting for the next focus to complete for another 150 political power.
All right, as we can. All right, as we complete our second focus, we get another 150 political power, which we're going to use for the silent workhorse. In this way, we get a little bit more political power, which we will need later on. At the same time, from now on, we also need to use on cooldown small lobbying effort. This is what we are going to do in order to minimize the RNG related to the Congress. Technically, you don't need to use this on cooldown, but using it on cooldown makes it a bit easier to avoid bad RNG with the Congress. So it's a bit annoying, but from now on we need to keep an eye on this and every 30 days we need to press on small lobbying effort. Meanwhile, you will get uh, free military factories at some point, and we need to use them right away. So we're going to change the infantry equipment uh, to 10, the support equipment to 5, towed artillery to 5. And we're going to, and we are going to add some anti-air. We're going to assign two factories uh, to uh, future factories uh, to anti-air. Try not to forget to pick a small lobbying effort on cooldown, otherwise you may have some differences with uh, from my guy. Now, I don't care about Navy's MIOs, so I pick them randomly, but you can do it more carefully. This one is more important. So these are my suggested uh, MIO's uh, priorities. So this is the suggested MIO priority for uh, artillery. Okay, at some point you should get uh, free dockyards if you followed uh, my uh, production. And what we're going to do at this point is we're going to start making convoys uh, and uh, we're also going to use this uh, as a chance to uh, start training the new ships that we uh, build. Okay, at uh, 25 uh, political power, we are going to pick amend the budget uh, to get uh, more civilian factories or better, less uh, consumer good factories used. Uh, by the way, something I didn't mention is we are not adjusting trade for chromium because we don't care. We are going to do it later on when we need other resources as well. Okay, as we complete uh, this focus, we get uh, another huge amount of political power, which we're going to use right away to select our army of fans uh, advisor. And then as soon as possible, the night operations advisor. We need to wait for a couple of days for command power. Meanwhile, uh, we're going to build infrastructures in all of the 80% uh, provinces. Try this once.
Okay, and now we can also pick the Knight Operations Advisor. So we're going to start building Army Experience and Air Experience. Since we cannot go at war early with the United States, it's important to have these uh, advisors to build uh, Army Experience and Air Experience in time for World War II. Okay, first election, and here it's and here it's important that we vote for the. All right, first election. It's important that we vote for the Democrats. So four more years. Let's go for the New Deal. And from now on, uh, we will also get some like minor missions, which will ask us to build uh, some uh, factories or infrastructures, civilian factories, uh, dockyards, and so on. We should always prioritize uh, completing those missions. I will show you in a bit. And we also keep uh, picking on cooldown small lobbying effort. As you can see, it is uh, ma we are making sure to keep a large majority in the Congress. Again, don't follow my suggestions here. I'm picking them randomly. Okay, see here we got our first mission, so accept it and then build a military factory in North Carolina. Or wherever they ask you to. This will give us senators and representatives, which will help again keeping a large majority in the Congress. Now, when you get uh, free military factories, uh, you can improve, uh, you can increase uh, the amount of factories dedicated to infantry equipment to 25. We can also pick uh, the um, Relief of Command Spirit, which is very, very good for uh, democracies. This is probably the best uh, spirit of the army, plus 25% army experience gain is absolutely crazy. Unfortunately, only democracies have access to this one, but yeah, since we are a democracy, we can take advantage of it. We're also going to start building military factories in all of the 100% provinces, uh, and then uh, in all of the 80% uh, provinces, uh, which will soon be 100%. And then whenever you do this, uh, I always suggest uh, you pay attention to the ones that which were already being built, and you prioritize them. Like, this one is almost completed, so let's make it first. Uh, this one too, as long as they are being built, uh, it's fine. The other ones, we don't really care about the order infrastructures before military factories of course finally there is one last thing that we're going to do now and it is uh, we're going to pick uh, the special forces doctrines for marines we have a lot of navy experience we're going to use it to unlock entirely the marines uh, special forces doctrines uh, we go for the right branch twice uh, so we focus on naval invasions not on uh, jungle fighting and whatever
For what uh, concerns uh, infantry equipment, uh, this is my suggested MIO priority. Can add this to too. Okay, let's do it again. <laughs> For what concerns uh, infantry equipment, uh, this is my suggested MIO priority. Okay, after we complete uh, this focus, we need to pay attention to something. Because what we want to pick next uh, is uh, this one to get rid uh, of, uh, slowly get rid of the very, very bad buffs we have uh, as the United States, the Great Depression in particular. But we cannot pick it yet. We will be able to pick it on the 16th of March. So we are, we are need... So we'll need to wait until the 16th of March and then we're going to pick this one. So for now we pick no focus at all. Uh, the other thing we need to pay attention to is uh, we need to have a good majority in order to pick this one. That's why we have been picking on cooldown, uh, small lobbying effort. Uh, but if you for some reason forgot or if you, or if you have very bad RNG, what you can do is uh, you can pick uh, the special measures just before in order to ensure that you have enough uh, representatives and senators for the congress approval ideally you will not need to pick this one so now let's wait until the 16th of march And there we are, 16th of March, we can pick the focus, so let's go immediately for this one. What we are losing here is about uh, 10 days, uh, because uh, 10 days uh, remain stored, so we can use it on the next focus. But we waited for a bit longer, so we wasted, let's say, about 10 days. But it is absolutely worth it, because it's very important to get rid of the massive debuffs from the Great Depression as soon as possible. As you get uh, new divisions, you can start assigning them to the two armies we already have. Then we are going to create a third one only with infantry. Meanwhile, we keep uh, we are. Meanwhile, uh, we keep uh, picking a uh, uh, small lobbying effort for a bit longer, not much longer. We already have a majority, which will probably last for the rest of the game, so we'll not have to worry about it anymore. But we're going to pick just a couple more. Okay, when you get uh, free military factories, uh, it's time to change the production a little bit. 
and it is try and it is also time to start designing our new fighters our first fighters i would say we're going to use uh, basic small airframes and we're going to start uh, with the fighter design now one thing to notice is that the united states already have access uh, to heavy machine guns uh, from the beginning of the game unfortunately they only have access to two uh, heavy machine guns and not uh, the four version of uh, heavy machine guns and uh, the only two version of them is not better than four light machine guns as you can see here we get a light uh, an air attack of 10 for a weight of 2 and here we get an air attack of 9 for a weight of uh, 2.5 although the production cost is slightly lower i would recommend going for light machine guns instead of heavy machine guns for now at least so what we're going to use is the usual design, which is this one. I suggest you click on auto upgrade and then we pick North American Aviation. We call this F1 and that's done. And uh, for what uh, concerns CAS, uh, I would recommend using uh, this design here again with auto upgrade and with the CAS designer. And then we're going to improve it uh, uh, later on, of course. But this is the, the default design. We're also going to start producing them. We're going to start with uh, fighters and we're going to make six. Then we're going to start uh, producing cars, uh, three of them. And finally, we're going to add trucks to the production. Six factories assigned. We are going to bring these guys up here above trains but this is the final production at the moment which means we also need to take care of uh, trade we are going to adjust the trade by importing both rubber and chromium we still don't need chromium but i will still adjust it otherwise uh, i will miss it uh, when we need uh, rubber because uh, i will always have this notification i don't want to constantly check this tab so mostly for that reason we are also going to import chromium so that we are happy with uh, uh, trade, uh, so that we have all of the resources we need. Now at this point we are also going to stop using small lobbying effort. Uh, we should have uh, a wide majority, so we shouldn't have to worry about it anymore, at least for quite a while. Uh, so we can forget about it for now. Okay, at 150 political power, we're going to pick the last advisor, and it is going to be the war industrialist. We're also going to start building military factories in all of the 100% provinces. And as before, we're going to prioritize the ones which were already being built. Also taking this chance to train the new ships we made. We are going to force deploy all of the divisions which we are recruiting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to use uh, William Simpson for the new army. And uh, ideally you would, uh, ideally you would uh, force deploy all of them, uh, but in, uh, in my case I'm a bit behind with the production, but that's okay. What we need to do at this point is we need to recruit another 9 infantry divisions.
And then we're going to recruit uh, 24 marine divisions. So 9 plus 24 marines. If you cannot uh, recruit uh, 24 marines, uh, it may be because you forgot uh, to pick uh, the special forces for marines. It's very important that you pick all of them, otherwise uh, you will not be able to recruit uh, at that many marines. And we can continue. Okay, as soon as possible, we should pick again, amend uh, the budget. Uh, it should be more or less when you have uh, 25 or slightly more political power. So we're going to pick this again. Okay, another mission, always uh, prioritize them, so munition plants in Arizona, let's do it. If I can find Arizona, which should be somewhere here, yeah, here, right. And at 25 political power, we're also going to pick uh, research grants. And uh, we're going to pick the naval doctrines uh, before we forget about them. I would suggest uh, uh, switching from uh, base strike uh, to fleet in being, but it is uh, entirely up to you. And then what I do is I gradually unlock all of them. Now, as soon as we complete uh, this research, it's time to design our new tanks. First of all, however, I would recommend uh, picking the uh, MIO, especially this one, the max speed one. As for the rest of the priority, I would recommend uh, something like this. As for our tank, uh, we're going to use uh, my usual uh, World War II design called the T1. These are the modules. We're going to use heavy machine guns, uh, 
the wet ammunition storage, the howitzer, the radio. We're going to use the Christie suspe suspension here, it's very important for the speed. And then we're going for a value of 9 in engine and 2 in armor for a total speed of around 8 km per hour. This is a very, very solid design, it will carry us through World War II. Now we also need uh, to start producing it uh, with Chrysler of course, uh, we give it the lowest priority, we assign to it all of the future factories uh, and we are also going to decrease the production of infantry equipment uh, to 15 uh, so that we start uh, already producing our T1. Now, once again, uh, we want to pick this focus to completely get rid of the Great Depression, of the Great Depression, but we need to wait uh, for it. Uh, we will be able to pick it on the... Uh, where was it? We will be able to pick it on the 31st of December, so we are going to need to wait uh, until the 31st of December before picking this focus. So let's go on and wait. Also make sure that you have uh, the Congress support for it. But it shouldn't be an issue with uh, uh, the uh, small lob lobbying efforts which we used. Uh, that's why we uh, invested so much into it. Okay, 31st of December. This is uh, now unlocked uh, and we're going to start uh, focusing on it uh, right away. Now next, uh, there is a tricky part of the run. Let's see what happens because this is the most RNG heavy part of the run. And uh, it's going to happen after the Anschluss. Okay, the Anschluss happened right now. Pause the game immediately. Because it's very important at this point uh, that you have 25% uh, or more uh, world uh, tension. If the world tension is below 25% uh, and Spain is about to capitulate, uh, but this is not the case here for example, then there may be a chance that you get 25% in the immediate future. But otherwise what happens sometimes, I'm not sure exactly what affects this part of the run, I don't think we can do anything about it. Uh, Especially thanks to Paradox, which uh, ruined uh, this part of my strategy. Let me explain you briefly why and how. Uh, first of all, let me talk about why we need the, the word tension to be at uh, 25%. Uh, the, reason, uh, the reason is that uh, with the word tension at 25%, uh, we can pick radio propaganda, which we're going to do immediately. And with radio pro propaganda, we have 30% uh, war support. which in return means uh, that we can pick uh, the giant wakes, uh, which will get us rid of uh, civilian economy, or better, will give us a civilian economy, meaning we will get rid of undisturbed, undisturbed isolation, which is, as you can see, horrible, absolutely horrible. So it's great uh, to get rid of this, uh, this early into the run. For that to happen, however, we need that 25% uh, war tension. Sometimes the war tension is not at 25%, and what I used to do before the last uh, DLC is uh, the United States had a guarantee on all of the South American countries. Uh, I would simply remove uh, the guarantee from Brazil. That would increase automatically the war tension above 25%, and we would be totally fine. Unfortunately, now, since we are no longer guaranteeing anyone, 
there is no way that I know of that I that I know of for us to increase the word attention, which means there is nothing we can do about it. If the word attention is at twenty four percent instead of twenty five percent, unfortunately, you need to play this part of the run a bit differently. The instructions are in the description in the sense that uh, instead of picking the giant wakes. Uh, when the time comes, uh, you will pick uh, the next uh, few focuses and you will go back uh, to the giant wakes a bit later into the run. It's still fine. Uh, it doesn't change massively the outcome uh, in the sense that uh, we will have a bit less equipment for World War II, but uh, nothing massive again. Uh, this is more optimal, of course. Uh, so if you get 25% uh, war tension, go for war propaganda immediately. Uh, sorry, radio propaganda immediately and then the giant wakes. By the way, you need to do it faster because war tension automatically uh, gradually goes down. So if you miss it, uh, if you miss the timing, even if you had 25%, uh, you might not be able to pick uh, radio propaganda. Okay, we completed the focus and as you can see, now we can pick uh, the giant wakes. We cannot, why cannot? Can we not? Ah, interesting. I have to. 30% for support. Or did they change this then? Okay, interestingly enough, I cannot pick the Giant Wakes, uh, despite having 30% uh, war support, which is usually enough, uh, here it says more than 30%, but usually 30% or more is enough. However, let's say that this may be a good test, uh, in the sense that maybe you uh, were unlucky in your run, you didn't get to 25% war tension. So let's pretend that we couldn't pick Radio Propaganda, and so we cannot pick the Giant Wakes, which is in fact uh, the case here. So what we pick instead is air war plan uh, divisions, uh, but again you can find this in the description of the video as well. Very strange. Now, when you get uh, free civilian factories, uh, you're going to need to build uh, some infrastructures and military factories. And what we're going to do is we're going to build them in uh, South Carolina. Indiana. Missouri. Texas. California. Oklahoma. And Mississippi. And then, of course, we need to do the same thing with uh, military factories uh, exactly in the same places. I also try to follow the same order, if possible. And for what concerns the fighter MIO, I would suggest uh, this priority here.
Yeah, probably we didn't have a good combination of uh, word tension and word support, so we needed slightly more uh, word tension in this run. Uh, again, the word tension uh, is uh, shown as uh, 24, 25, uh, but it's not exactly 24, 25. Uh, so uh, in the lucky runs, uh, you will have slightly more than 30% uh, and you can pick uh, the giant wakes. In the unlucky runs, uh, you will either not be able to pick it uh, because you don't get the 30% or you will have a low 30% and still not be able to pick it but that's uh, that's good that's good for the showcase uh, so i can show you exactly what to do when you don't have uh, the 30 percent required for support Now, after building infrastructures and military factories, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to design our armored divisions. So what we're going to do in terms of the template uh, is uh, something like this. Uh, we go for a combat width of uh, 35, uh, which is optimal. Now this is very, very expensive in terms of army experience, but luckily we have enough, so we don't care. And uh, uh, what else we're going to do here is... Uh, Another thing we're going to do here is we're going to use uh, Pioneers uh, and not uh, the regular engineer company, because Pioneers are better with all of the doctrines unlocked. And then later on, we'll, uh, we're also going to add the flame tanks, uh, but that's not uh, something to worry about for now. So this is the armored division template that we're going to use. So we're going to save it and we're going to start uh, recruiting 13 of them. Sorry, 12 of them. We're also going to start uh, training the new ships uh, and we're going to pick uh, the naval doctrines. Uh, just in case, so we don't forget about them later. Yes, sir. And now we would be able to pick the giant wakes, I see, probably because uh, something happened, uh, but Spain is not down yet. But see, now we got a high 25%, uh, which probably increased our war support to a high 30%, uh, and it means we could pick uh, the giant wakes. But again, I will not do it, uh, although it may be convenient. Uh, it's only 17 days. Uh. Mm. Yeah, it's probably better. I did want to show you the alternative version, uh, but I think it's probably better to pick uh, the giant wakes at this point. Because uh, it's only 17 days. Uh, of which we saved 10, uh, so it's only 7 days. Uh, it is worth it. Uh, okay, so we go for the giant wakes at this point, and I will show you the normal outcome of the run uh, when uh, you get a fairly lucky run, let's say. Okay, let's go for the giant wakes then. But again, in the description of the focuses, you can find uh, all of the instructions to proceed, uh, even if you don't have uh, more than 30% war support. Uh, moreover, if you purchase the membership and you, are, you have access to the, to the spreadsheet, uh, you just skip uh, the parts which are related uh, to uh, the giant wakes, uh, and uh, you go back to them later. It's very easy anyway.
No, where is Missouri? Nah, no, it's not here. Is it? Am I already building in Missouri? I'm, I'm already building in Missouri. No, yes, I am. I am, but not right now. Hmm. Prioritize them or not? We should probably. Let's do it like this. And uh, for motorized, I would suggest uh, the following MIO priority. Okay, as soon as you complete uh, this focus, assuming that you were able to pick it, and you have uh, 150 political power, you can change from civilian economy to partial mobilization. This is amazing because basically in one focus uh, we switch from undisturbed economy to partial mobilization, which is of course much, 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 much better. In this way, we also gain access to these uh, other focuses here, which are all very good uh, in terms of uh, building our military industry a bit faster. So we continue with them. Attention. Yes, sir. For the army of uh, marines, I usually use uh, Maori's uh, Rose. And now we need to build a civilian factory in uh, Wyoming. Assuming that I can find it, look at me, spotted immediately. That means when you can find uh, Wyoming on the map immediately, it means you have been playing as the United States a bit too much. Now this is a fairly quiet uh, and boring part of the run, there isn't much that we can do other than assigning the new divisions and constantly adjusting trade in a very very fun way. Okay, by the way, at this point uh, is uh, when you get more than 25% uh, word tension regardless of what you picked before. And uh, so at this time of the run we would be able to pick the giant wakes uh, regardless uh, of the situation. So basically this is the delay between uh, picking it earlier and picking it now. It's it's just a few months. It's not uh, a massive difference. In which all Europe may find peace. 
This morning, I had another talk with the German Chancellor, Herr Hitler. And here is the paper which bears his name upon it as well as mine. Some of you perhaps have already heard what it contains. Ready. I'd just like to read it to you. We, the German Okay, when you get the uh, free civilian factories. Uh We are going to build uh, military factories in all of the 100% provinces. Uh, we will need actually to wait for a little bit longer because we are almost done uh, with the uh, concentrated industry. So quite soon we'll be able to build uh, more in uh, more military factories in all of the 100% provinces. But as you can see we have a couple more here that we can use uh, for now. And then we go back to adjusting trade, uh, which is uh, what we will be doing for the next uh, few months. To deal with any other questions that may concern our two countries, and we are determined to continue our efforts to remove possible sources of difference, and thus to contribute to assure the peace of Europe. However, at this point, we can also pick amend the budget and uh, research grants. Uh, so let's do it. It is also a good time to design our flame tank Which we cannot do yet because we don't have this research yet So we need to wait a bit longer Now this is why I hate uh, free trade, uh, because you constantly need to adjust uh, trade and import uh, constantly. You spend more time on this tab than uh, on doing anything else in the game. If there was a way in the game to automatically import resources that you need, uh, like an option up here that you click and you automatically import everything you need, uh, that would be quite cool. I do see the advantages of uh, free trade, uh, the buffs are amazing, but uh, that's quite annoying to do. Okay, we completed a uh, concentrated industry, which means we can now build uh, more military factories in all of the 100% provinces. It's actually quite a lot of them. And then especially when you do something like this, uh, be careful to prioritize the ones which were already being built, or you will waste a lot of efficiency on these, uh, on these factories. And let's also wait one more day so we unlock uh, the flame tanks as we complete uh, this research it is time to design and produce uh, flame tanks Okay, so for flame tanks, uh, what I like to use is uh, this design. We have uh, the fuel drums to increase uh, the fuel capacity on our armored divisions, which is great. 
Uh, we have the lightest possible turret to make it as cheap as possible. Production cost of 8 is actually fairly expensive, but it's okay. And then we also add the dozer blade, uh, simply because this module is free. You can also remove it entirely, but the production cost is fairly low. And one more in entrenchment uh, can be useful, you never know. It's one of the few stats which are not uh, decreased uh, by it uh, being a flame tank. Uh, if you feel like you want to make it cheaper, you can, uh, you can remove this one. And we can save it, we can produce it. We want to produce uh, five of them and we're going to take them away from our T1 production. And then we're also going to pick the naval doctrines at this point, otherwise uh, we're going to forget and we're going to cap our navy experience. All right. Okay, as soon as we complete uh, this focus, so we can also pick the General Motors uh, concern. Here we go, for uh, even extra factory output. Which is quite amazing because considering free trade, considering everything, our factory output is uh, quite insane. Look at this, plus 84% uh, factory output. It's quite crazy. And now we can really go for air work lands divisions. Now we are basically only waiting for our planes and in the meantime you will spend uh, your days and weeks uh, and life uh, picking stupid uh, trade resources. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And assigning divisions. Attention.
All right, so as soon as, as, soon as we complete uh, the improved uh, small airframe, it's time to design our F2 and C2 and start producing them. I suggest you do it from the ones you already have in here, so you will uh, spend a little bit less to make them. And now we are going to use heavy machine guns indeed. Here is my usual insanely good F2 design. As for what concerns the C2, we're going to use this very balanced design. So we don't use the self-sealing fuel tanks to save on rubber. Instead, we use the dive brakes, which are just as good or almost just as good. And uh, we get a very good air attack, ground attack, sorry, and air defense is okay. So this is a very good design with good range as well. Going to start producing both of them. But that's not all. We're also going to start uh, uh, deploying everything or to force uh, deploy everything because we want to adjust our divisions. We want to have them on the field. So for the tank army, we're going to use uh, George Patton. And uh, the Marines are the other more, more, most important one with uh, Maurice Rose with Maurice Rose. Make sure that they have the highest motorization priority, they execute battle plans uh, aggressively, and then we need to make some adjustments to our divisions. For what concerns the infantry divisions, we are just going to add uh, the support anti-air, and that's it. For what concerns tanks, uh, we are just going to add uh, the medium flame tank, com flame tank uh, company and that's it. For what concerns marines, uh, we need uh, to make uh, quite a few changes. So first of all, we are going to increase uh, the combat width. To uh, 30 with this design. And then in terms of support companies, we are going to use pioneers, of course. Uh, we're going to use support artillery, support anti-air, we're going to use uh, uh, cavalry recon, and we're going to add uh, medium flame tanks. So this is the final marine brigade. Now this is a very very good uh, template, uh, so these marines uh, can push for us uh, even after disembarking. This is actually a very very strong uh, combat division. It's expensive, but we can afford it. And now we're going to make some changes in terms of uh, production. We're going to decrease the production of trucks uh, to 5. And we're going to increase the production of artillery to 25. The, pro the production of uh, C2 to 15. T1, we're going to upgrade it, first of all. So, uh, upgrade, upgrade the MIO, I mean. And then we're going to reduce uh, the production to 25. And everything else we have, uh, we assign to our F2 fighters. Uh, we decrease the priority to the minimum and then we assign all the remaining factories uh, to them. And we will need to adjust the uh, trade, of course. Now, I suggest you do not import from uh, France, because France, uh, as you know, it's not going to last uh, for very long in uh, World War II. So. Soviet Union is probably a safer bet. And we're also going to start uh, training the new ships. 
and we're going to force uh, and and we're going to deploy all planes we should have a fair amount of them and we're going to train them too We're almost ready from some for some action, boys. Almost ready. Now in terms of uh, cast MIO I would suggest uh, this priority Okay, World War II is uh, finally starting, which means finally we will get some action, but not just yet, in the sense that, unfortunately, uh, as the United States, we are not allowed uh, to join uh, the Allies until the war tension is at about uh, 100%. Actually, usually we can do it a bit earlier, when it's about uh, 80%, but still, we cannot do it yet. So, for now, we will need to prepare, but we cannot join the war just yet. Now, first of all, we are going to use uh, some of this nice political power that we have here by picking the superior firepower expert, uh, the infantry expert, uh, the tactical bombing expert, uh, and the army logistics expert. We are also going to use uh, some of our experiences in here. And uh, we're going to do that uh, first of all by picking the smoke and fire spirit and supp suppressive barrage uh, tactic. And we're also going to pick, uh, well, naval refitting yards, I like this one, but not particularly important. Uh, 
air crew surveys and centralized control a lot more important we're going to start picking our air doctrines and we can pick already a decent amount of them and we can also pick some of the naval doctrines of course as well as some of the land doctrines and that's it Now let's make sure. Now we can also make sure that our army has the maximum uh, motorization priority, the aggressive uh, battle plans, and we can start assigning them all of the traits uh, that uh, we have available. Particularly important is the Panzer Expert for him. We can also give him suppressive barrage, and, uh, and there is this guy here. He's fine. And uh, not particularly relevant to this one. In any case, when they have traits that, uh, when they have, in any case, you can assign all of the traits uh, to your armies. And now we're going to make some uh, changes uh, to the training mode in the sense that from now on we want to shift click and not uh, to train them forever anymore, but just uh, as long as it, as it is uh, necessary. We're going to do the same thing with the navy, so we gather it uh, and then we, we shift click on it. Uh, Probably the Navy will be already trained and we are going to deploy all of our planes and shift click on train for all planes as well. Now at this point I would suggest uh, making a save uh, just in case you need to change something for the setup for World War 2. This will be the last, uh, the last chance to do so. So let's make a save now. And uh, we're also going to start using a small lobbying effort again because as you can see we are struggling a bit uh, with the majority in the Congress at the moment. Okay, when you get uh, free civilian factories, uh, you can just uh, build uh, infrastructures and then military factories in all of the 60% or plus uh, provinces. We need to keep an eye on the world tension because when it is again about 80% uh, we will be able to join uh, the allies. Now at this point, if you can, you should pick Amanda Budget and uh, Research Grants, uh, but as you can see, we were a bit unlucky with the RNG with the Council, uh, with the Congress, sorry. We were a bit uh, unlucky with the RNG in terms of the Congress, so we cannot pick them right away. We'll be able to pick them in a little bit uh, after a couple more uh, small lobbying efforts, probably. Yes, sir.
Now things are escalating quite uh, quickly, so very soon uh, we'll be able to join the allies. Let's see if we can already do that. Uh, probably not. Uh, yeah, because we need uh, a bit more. Okay. And now actually we need 100% uh, because we cannot join them uh, yet. Ah, uh, yes, this is because of the... Um, this is because of the Neutrality Act, that's right. I don't pick this when I go fascist, so that's the difference. So we will need to wait until 100% war tension before we can join the Allies. Okay, now we can pick amend the budget and uh, research grants. So let's go on and do that. Uh, and let's keep picking a small lobbying effort because we need to keep the Congress happy. And at this point, we're also going to upgrade our T1 MIO. We need to do this from time to time. Another very, very fun part of that uh, amazing update. And let's wait for the war tension to get to 100%. And there we go. 100% uh, uh, war tension means it's time uh, to move uh, to Europe. Uh, not yet uh, joining the war, but almost. Uh. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to ask uh, the United Kingdom to join the Allies. Uh, they will accept. Uh, and now we can start moving our divisions. Of course, we don't want to join their war yet. So in this way, uh, Germany cannot intercept uh, our divisions uh, while we move uh, to the United Kingdom. At this point, I would also start planning an invasion of uh, France. Because by the time we get to the UK, sadly, France will no longer be France. Uh, it will be occupied uh, by Germany. And so we will need to plan a D-Day to get to Normandy. We're going to do this even a bit for fun in a more historical way. So, I suggest uh, you plan the invasion of Normandy from uh, Port Portsmouth. I don't know how to pronounce this place. Okay, let's do it differently, at least for the edited version. You lucky people will see my terrible pronunciation in the unedited version, but Let's plan an invasion of Normandy from the southern coast of England. So we start from here and uh, we go for groups of uh, four. And we go for something like this. Uh, now, these marines are amazing, so they will destroy the German divisions in this uh, naval invasion. They, they will really perform uh, very well. Uh, but we need to get ready first, because we are not even in England yet. Now, uh, for what concerns the tanks, uh, we're going to assign them uh, just behind the marines and the other divisions, anywhere you want in the UK. Just as long as they are ready to move to... Germany and France uh, when the time comes. We're also going to make sure to de deploy all planes and we're going to assign all planes uh, to the airfields in the UK and possibly giving them a mission either in the Channel or in uh, Western France. Now, in terms of the navies, uh, feel free to do things differently. It's not mandatory that you manage them as exactly as I do. I just show you the easiest possible way to do this. Not the best way to manage the navy, but the easiest. So we're going to split uh, the entire navy into two fleets. I'm going to create a new theater. And then we're going to assign uh, the second fleet uh, to convoy escort. Actually, we're going to split them in a balanced way, in this way. 
and then we are going to assign them to convoy escort uh, to all of the regions, uh, sea regions in which uh, we think our supplies will move through, so probably something like this. As for the other navy, we are just going to move them uh, to the southern coast of England and they will support uh, our naval invasion. This is the easiest way to manage the navy against Germany, in my opinion. Now we also want to do something in terms of uh, buildings. We are going to build uh, railways uh, from uh, the capital of Washington to uh, this uh, place here, Norfolk, because uh, these supplies uh, to Europe uh, will go from here, uh, but we need uh, a connection between our capital and uh, this place uh, in order to benefit uh, fully from uh, the supplies. So we want to build the railways and we also want to prioritize them above other constructions. Okay, now we can continue. We don't have much else to do until our divisions are ready in the UK. As expected, France is going down quite fast. It's actually better for us. We don't want to get uh, to France before they capitulate. We're very happy to take uh, this uh, for ourselves. Uh, in the end, we want uh, to have uh, as much war score as possible. Now, to easily manage your planes uh, during the war, I suggest you assign them all uh, to the marines. Uh, in this way, they will support the marines uh, during the naval invasion, and then they will spread automatically in the best possible airfields in, uh, in France. Every chance brought forth a noble knight. The 
deserve our gratitude. Yes, to all the brave men. In so many ways and on so many... Okay, our divisions are almost in uh, position. Of course, we're going to wait until they have full organization and then we're going to join the war. We also want France to go down and that should be the case very soon. So let's see. Naturally, we don't want to naval invade our allies. So. Okay, France is uh, down. Actually, the timing is uh, perfect in this case. Uh, because probably the Germans will not have much time to prepare to defend the defense uh, since France just uh, capitulated. We could, uh, to make it a bit more challenging, we could wait a little bit, I guess. Uh, should we? Uh, of course, if you were importing from France, uh, now you can no longer do that. You know what, let's pretend the Germans did a bit better and uh, took France uh, down a bit earlier. I want to make this a little bit more challenging, so let's just give them some time to prepare for our naval invasion. Not too much time, uh, because uh, we want to end the war. Okay, I'm going to assume that the Germans did uh, prepare for our naval invasion now. So we will make a save and we will finally join the war. Oh my god, Churchill, shut up. I want some fun music. Can we? What do we have? War ends, it's not really the right one, but yeah. Whatever, it will probably change once we start uh, the war. Okay, so at this point uh, we want to join uh, wars. We offer this uh, to the UK, they will accept. We want to start uh, preparing our fleet uh, for naval invasion support and right away we want to trigger our naval invasion of Normandy. We're also going to change something in terms of uh, production. We bring the artillery back down to 5. And uh, we're going to bring a T1 upgraded to uh, a total of 50 factories. The rest goes to F2 fighters. Uh, let's make sure that uh, we have the rest first. Uh, so the rest goes to F2. Of course we need to adjust uh, trade after doing this. We're also going to pick uh, War Bonds, uh, because it's amazing. And let's see how D-Day goes. Okay, they are defending, and they must have a fair amount of divisions, because our Marines are amazing, so only 60. But uh, you will see how we completely destroy them in here. Well, it's only two divisions, it's not that many. It doesn't matter, they would be destroyed in any case. Yes, sir. Our divisions here are really, really good. Move out. All in. Okay, now after disembarking, uh, what we want to do here is uh, we want to take some land, but we don't want to take Paris. Uh, taking Paris uh, will uh, recreate France. Uh, 
And we're going to wait a little bit for that, uh, because here we have two easy encirclements uh, against the Germans, uh, and we want to take advantage of that. Uh, what we don't want to do here is we don't want to run out of supplies. And in order not to run out of supplies, we need to connect uh, to this uh, uh, railway center, let's say. So we need to take uh, something like this. Now, something like this uh, would be ideal to maintain the supplies. Actually, we do need that to get maybe this one to work. Something like this is ideal. Let's uh, also start sending our tanks over. And uh, always pick the military doctrines next to are particularly important. So whenever you unlock them, pick them immediately. And just be careful not to take Paris. You may need to do this a bit more manually because, as you know, uh, in I4 divisions tend to do whatever they want and not what you tell them to do. But this is more or less alright. Now, what we want to do with our tanks uh, is uh, we want to cut off uh, Germany completely. And uh, Vichy France is uh, something like their puppet, but it's not in the war. So the encirclements uh, like this uh, will work. So we're going to do this uh, with our tanks uh, to minimize casualties. Uh, our casualties are very good for now. So let's see if we can keep it that way. Now, we can also send uh, more divisions uh, to reinforce uh, the fronts, uh, especially this one will be under a lot of pressure, so we can send a couple more divisions uh, down from the UK. And uh, I would also recommend stopping the naval invasion, otherwise you will run out of fuel, but until you do, you can keep it up. Until you do have fuel, I mean, you can keep it up. Pushing them back, sir! I must say, sometimes uh, taking this part of land is not as easy as it was here. And one thing which is very important is uh, be careful to take these railways, uh, because if you do not take the railways as I showed you, you will run out of supplies very easily in here. And without supplies, then this will be a big struggle. We can use the staff office plan uh, to speed up uh, the planning for our tanks, uh, make it a little bit easier. We actually don't mind the Germans moving in here. The more divisions they have in here, the more they will lose uh, to the encirclement. I think we can go. Because we are starting to run a bit low on supplies, uh, so it's time to take the next uh, supply hubs.
Okay, we took care of the people in uh, Brittany, but uh, we still they still have a lot of divisions in here. Here it's a bit annoying because we don't have a lot of supplies. Okay, we finally got uh, the first uh, mini encirclement in here. And we can take advantage of it. Move out. And it's always nice to see German divisions getting completely destroyed. Now we can uh, rearrange the divisions a little bit. Of course, here we have another easy encirclement uh, to get. So let's go on and get it. Rearrange uh, the divisions a little bit. I'm also sending the last uh, uh, defensive army or regular army down uh, to Germany. Ready, sir. start this push this is a, a a much easier push once you have supplies in here the germans will have absolutely no hope of surviving and now we unlock this focus we are slightly late but as soon as you unlock the focus you should immediately pick the decision execute war plan back we get a very nice offensive and defensive bonus against germany so of course we want to pick it as soon as possible Now we really want to stop the naval invasion, otherwise uh, we'll run out of uh, fuel, which we need uh, for our tanks. Yes, sir. Attention. Well, they didn't have that many divisions in here, sadly, but uh, yes, still better than nothing. Yes, sir. Okay, what we're going to do next, uh, so after you take this part of France, is we are going to take Paris. And taking Paris will make uh, Vichy France uh, disappear. So what we want to do is we, ha we want to have some divisions ready at the border with Vichy France. And these divisions will then cover the southern part of uh, 
Germany here and defend against uh, Italy while uh, we try to encircle all of the German divisions which remain in this area. Yes, sir. So ideally what we want to do when we push uh, Paris is uh, we want to push a little bit more than Paris. We could go for something like this uh, for example, this would be ideal and then from here we will try to get down to Switzerland. For this uh, we absolutely want the full planning because this will be a fairly difficult push. Okay, we're happy with uh, Brazil uh, joining the Allies, uh, so you can accept uh, this uh, event. Ready. As uh, for the event concerning Mexico, I suggest uh, you embargo them and then you trade with them again when you, next, when you get the next event. Let's try to get a full planning, although the Germans keep attacking us, so it would be a bit more difficult here to get uh, to get the full planning. Okay, I would say we are pretty much ready for the offensive, uh, so let's see how this offensive goes. Uh, again, this is maybe the most difficult one against the Germans, but we have uh, insanely good tanks. Uh, so despite the fact that they have a lot of divisions in here, you can see how quickly we are destroying them. And now, as Paris went down, we also got uh, the southern part of France. This is not great uh, in terms of strategy, because now nobody is defending it. So I'm going to use a fullback line with our army down here and we're going to try to keep uh, Germany away from Italy something like this uh, and hopefully they will get there in time in. as we proceed with our push here in the north Okay, and this was a very successful push. The next one is more important because with the next one, uh, what we want to do is we want to cut off uh, the German divisions in here. Hopefully they will be a lot. It's not uh, always the case, but let's see. In any case, uh, the important thing is we separate them from the rest of Germany and from Italy. So let's uh, prepare with our tanks. really want to attack them here. Yes, sir. All in. Okay, second important doctrine. And if you have any any free spare political power, what you can do is you can pick the uh, domestic film industry which will increase a little bit our war support. So let's go on and get that. Our tanks are ready, so let's start uh, this push uh, before the Germans reorganize uh, too much. They still have a lot of divisions, of course. They 
I tell you to go there? I didn't tell you to go there. Don't go there. Pushing them back, sir. But this is going exactly as uh, planned. And there we go, we got the encirclement. And we don't necessarily want to push uh, too much in there, so we are happy with this. Uh, what we want to do is we want to close uh, this uh, encirclement here and destroy everything in it. And uh, it's not a huge amount of divisions, but there are some divisions in there. So I'm not going to complain. Very happy with what I'm seeing. A lot of Germans divisions destroyed in here too. Let's give a look at the casualties. 27,000. Now, against Germany, you cannot expect extremely low casualties. Uh, especially because we are also using Marines to attack, not only armored divisions. But we still are talking about 27,000 versus uh, 1.4 million. So, not bad, you know? Not bad. Now... Germany is uh, far from done, but it's time for us to focus on uh, Italy. Italy is easier to take down and not having to worry about Italy will be beneficial. So we are going to prepare our tank divisions and one of the defensive armies. And the primary goal is to cut off Germany from Italy. Make sure that Germany cannot send divisions to Italy. As also splitting Italy in, the, in two parts may be beneficial. It shouldn't be difficult. Uh, Sometimes uh, this part of the world, the part in France, is a bit harder, but the part in Italy is always very easy in my experience. Why do you want to attack them so bad? Yes, sir. Nobody asked Brazil for uh, military access, but okay. Okay, so when you get uh, this event, uh, you can trade again uh, with Mexico and you get some uh, some good bonuses as well. At least to the opinion. Uh, in uh, this phase of the war, I would keep the planes in here because uh, we probably don't have enough for both uh, regions and Italy is, as I said, it's very easy, so it's better to keep the planes to support our divisions in here. Okay, I think our tanks are ready, so let's go take care of Italy. I would really like to know what the fuck they are doing here. 
Come on, boys, come on, you can do it. really like not to have to micromanage my units but they behave so poorly with the ultimate look at this this guy just decided to push south of florence for absolutely no reason when that command was to push in the north absolutely no reason yeah i'm gonna have to take this into my own hands i mean there is nobody here so this is not difficult it's just annoying that they push wherever they want not where i tell them to Okay, this event usually happens uh, quite a bit earlier, but whenever it happens, I suggest you demand uh, compensation from uh, Japan. No war, it's not time yet. We'll do it later. As you can see, usually Japan uh, agrees uh, and we get some extra political power. Not that we particularly need it at the moment. It will be useful later. Okay, Italy is already in a civil war, so as uh, expected, Italy is going down uh, very quickly. Okay, now as the northern part of Italy is under control, uh, we can start assigning our uh, defensive army to it. Uh, and we can use uh, tanks uh, to take care of the rest of Italy, the southern part of Italy. You know, you usually have to go all the way to Palermo to end, uh, to end the war. Okay, as you complete uh, this uh, research, uh, it means we can design our new tanks, so let's go on and do that. And we can now make our T2 uh, design, which is going to be this one. We're going to start producing it, uh, which will mean uh, importing a lot more steel, but we can afford it, so that's okay. We also need uh, to make some uh, changes to our medium tank. Uh, we want to bring the engine uh, to 11 to match the speed of our other tank. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to upgrade the MIO or not, uh, because breakthrough and reliability are not super important on uh, flame tanks. I will just do it in this case. We 
we're also going to start uh, producing uh, mechanized. And we're going to adjust uh, the production a little bit, uh, in the sense that we are going to assign all factories to mechanized uh, and we're going to bring down the production of F2 to uh, 25. So everything else goes into mechanized. Now we have quite a lot of planes uh, at this point uh, to deploy, so we are going to do that. Uh, look at the amount of planes we have, that's uh, pretty impressive, and all of these planes we can assign them to the not these ones, uh, to the uh, tank army, so that now they will also have some uh, plane, uh, some air support. First we need to adjust the trade. Let's do it, uh, let's do it the brutal way. Alright, and now let's take care of the remaining part of Italy. Okay, now when uh, Mexico asks to join the Allies, uh, I would accept that. Uh, it's uh, more convenient for us, uh, the more people are in the Allies. Uh, not for this war, but for something else that we will see later. So let Mexico join the Allies. Okay, if your uh, generals get wounded, uh, that's actually pretty bad, uh, because as you can see it lasts for 90 days, uh, so I would always recommend uh, replacing whichever general is wounded, especially if you are actively using them. In this case we have another good general for Panzers. We're going to replace uh, Patton with uh, Hodges. Okay, and Italy should be completely down. That's perfect. Yes, now we can uh, rearrange our armored divisions because of course it's time uh, to take down uh, Germany. And uh, this can be a little bit challenging, but uh, we actually made the setup uh, very well. So taking down Germany from now on shouldn't be the hardest thing. What we're going to do is we're going to get a couple more encirclements on the way to Berlin. And by the time we get to Berlin, Germany will be completely broken. For the first one, I would say... Let's do it again, actually. For the first one, I would say we could go for something like this. Uh, and the idea would be to encircle all of their divisions in here. First, we need to get there, of course. 
Now, by the way, when you defeat Italy, now it's mostly part of France, but Regno del Sud is the puppet that you get automatically when the civil war in Italy arises. And this puppet is usually a subject of the UK, as you can see. Now, with most countries, when you defeat Italy, you get the Regno del Sud as your own puppet. But when we do this as the United States, uh, this puppet is a puppet of the United Kingdom instead, so it's not our puppet. However, this is not a bad thing, and you will see how and why a bit later. Actually, this will be a secret for the next video, but uh, you can start thinking about why it's a good thing that it's a puppet of the UK and not, uh, and not our puppet. Ready. Let's see if someone guesses correctly in the, in the comments. Also make sure that all of our planes uh, have missions assigned. We could also do something like these. Uh, we assign them like these, then we split them like these. Okay, so we have more or less half on each army. Okay, let's give them a staff office plan to start this offensive as fast as possible. Okay, Hungary joins the Axis, uh, we don't mind, uh, and we are ready for the big push, uh, big encirclement, uh, let's see how this one goes. Again, they have a lot of divisions uh, with entrenchment, uh, and uh, once again, we do not care, because our tanks are really, really amazing. Look at this. It's like, uh, it's like pushing the weakest country in the world, and it's actually Germany, which at this point of the game, uh, it's likely the strongest country. They have very good divisions, uh, they have some armored divisions, not very armored to be honest, but they have some. And yet, they get destroyed. Okay, and uh, Brazil is joining the Allies as well. They have a lot of divisions in there. I wonder if we could uh, somehow encircle them. Let's see. We did, but I'm not entirely sure because uh, I cannot properly see what's happening here. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, they are encircled, uh, these guys. Uh, it doesn't look like that, but they are. Okay, so they're all dead. Nice. We got some massive encirclements in here. But we're not done yet, uh, so let's continue. Now, as you can see, we are trying to avoid uh, this area, which is heavily fortified. Uh, so if we can avoid pushing here, it's probably better. What we can do instead uh, is we can push right here in the middle. We can go for Hanover. 
and Frankfurt. Ready. Okay, Romania joins the Axis as well. Uh, these people are kind of late uh, and that may be making our war slightly easier because sometimes you have Hungary, Bulgaria and uh, Romania from the very beginning in the war. But uh, trust me, with these tanks uh, you will just push them no matter what. The secret to pushing any enemy in this game is good armor, divisions, uh, air support uh, and supplies. With that, uh, nothing can stop you. Single player, talking about at least. Attention. Okay, we got the planning, let's go. Alright, that's enough, and uh, with this push done, it's time to encircle the divisions up there. As we do that, uh, we can also start going around and a bit closer to Berlin. Attention. Now the German divisions are getting uh, smaller in size and in numbers. Let's see the casualties. We got 42,000 and Germany is already at 3.1 million, of which 2.9 we caused. Look at the comparison with the other allies as well. It's absolutely insane. And I think pretty soon these numbers will become even crazier. Although Germany is now so weak that probably we cannot cause them that many casualties anymore. Okay, let's go. Okay, as you unlock uh, heavy bombs, uh, you can start designing an upgraded version of our CAS, uh, which uses, uh, in fact, uh, heavy bomb blocks instead of small bomb bays. And you can also take the chance to upgra upgrade uh, the MIO. So let's start making these uh, improved CAS. Uh, let's do the same thing for uh, F2, or better, I mean, uh, let's upgrade uh, the MIO for F2. And let's upgrade uh, upgrade the MIO for tanks uh, as well. It's not an uh, upgrade an MIO in this case. I'm not sure what's different, but whatever. Yes, let's produce the newer ones. All right, perfect. You can tell that the German army is destroyed because they don't have divisions anymore. Berlin is here and there is an, a Hungarian division protecting Berlin instead of, uh, instead of German divisions. Well, they do have a fair amount of them, but they're all stuck in there. And the other ones are getting destroyed here. Attention. 
Okay, so at this point I would say it's time to push for Berlin. Uh, we should probably rearrange the other divisions a little bit now because the front is starting to be a bit uh, too wide for them to cover it efficiently. So I would assign uh, Marines to basically the entire fort uh, front. They are the best divisions we have. And then uh, one of the defensive armies will cover this part here, same as the Marines. And the other defensive army will cover the part where we don't want to push the fortified area in here. We can start to push already because, again, they don't have division, so we can just speed this up uh, a bit. Okay, in this case uh, Germany took all of Denmark, sometimes they don't, uh, actually usually they didn't uh, and after the last uh, patch yes, they sometimes do take all of Denmark uh, under their control. That's okay, it doesn't change too much. It will take a little bit longer to go all the way up there, but yeah, it's a very minor change. Okay, now it's time for basically the last push of the war. The war is basically already won, but uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to push for these uh, important victory points in here. And they will be decisive, although we also need to take Vienna to actually end the war, but uh, this will actually be the decisive push. At this point, if you're in a hurry, you can also just rush the victory points because they will not have enough divisions to stop you. But we are not in a hurry. Uh, yeah, one annoying thing is uh, these uh, points which get a bit messed up up there. So and reassign divisions. Uh, this is worth it because uh, we are not actually at war with uh, the German protectorate of Denmark. So we don't need divisions up there. Yes, sir. Let's give them some planning bonus for this last push. Let's pretend it's a difficult one. And let's go. And as you can see, it's not a difficult one. Now these armor divisions are amazing whichever country you play, of course if you put them in the hands of a strong country by itself like the United States, uh, which can produce a large number of them in time for the war and even more later you will see because this run is far from over, uh, well then they become uh, truly insane. That's why in one of my next challenges I want to play somebody in the Balkans, probably Romania and try to make armor divisions with uh, a country which doesn't have the industry to sustain a large number of them. See if they can still be effective if used with light tanks and uh, maybe in uh, smaller numbers. Very curious to see. Ready. 
Attention! Attention! Yes, sir. Now let's check the war score because likely Germany will fall as soon as we take Vienna. It may not actually, 32%. Uh, not entirely sure Vienna would be enough. Let's take Salzburg and Innsbruck too as well, uh, to them. Completely falling apart, of course. Attention. If we can get easily to Vienna. Okay, we're about to get to Vienna, and uh, taking Vienna should end uh, the war. Now, I would always recommend making a save uh, just before ending the war. You never know. I mean, uh, there isn't that much that we can do. We are very satisfied with the total war score. Very, very satisfied with the casualties. Uh, so let's take a look at this before we end the war. 42,000 casualties in World War II with a naval invasion of Germany, and against Germany especially. These are stats which would be good against the Allies, and the Allies are much weaker than Germany. So insane stats. 42,000, and we cause about uh, 4 million, uh, 4.5 million, let's see. In this case, it's mostly our casualties. Against Italy, usually the United Kingdom, yeah, has more, because they fight in, uh, in Africa. But yeah, overall, insane stats. Insane stats. So let's make a save. Called USA World War II, almost over. Or, G yeah, almost over. No, actually, Germany almost over. No, let me see. Sorry. Uh, how did I call it? Uh, World War II almost over. Okay, let, let me call it World War II almost over then. And uh, let's officially end the war. Let's see if it's true or not. Germany, yeah, it's true. So the war is uh, officially over. That's it. Now, peace conference uh, time. Now, what we want to do in the peace conference is we want to puppet uh, ideally all of Germany. And then if we have any spare points, we can use them to puppet also Hungary, Romania and uh, Bulgaria. But the priority is uh, Germany. They have the best uh, resources and uh, uh, in industry. So, of course, uh, it's worth uh, doing so. And, uh, well, I will skip the peace conference for you mostly. But uh, the other thing we want to do is uh, after puppeting them, uh, we want to take the war reparations. But we don't want to take uh, resource rights because with free trade, uh, resource rights are very bad. So we're going to take uh, uh, war reparations and then maybe some of their navy. Okay, we took all of Germany. Let's see if we have any spare points to take maybe part of Hungary. Especially a part of Hungary with um, aluminum could be beneficial. So let's see if we can get it. And this one will be expensive now. Let's give up on this one. And then maybe the part of Romania with, uh, with oil may be convenient. It is fairly expensive to be honest. Huh? Well, let's see. You can also take Albania. Depends on how many points you have left uh, at the end of the war. With this amount, I would say we can easily fight them over these things. 
And this one is too expensive, uh, but uh, yeah, overall we are satisfied. And now let's take uh, the navies and let's take uh, the war reparations. Right, this stuff is not mine. But I think we got uh, everything we had to take. So we puppeted uh, most of them. We took war reparations from everyone. And we took everybody's navies as well. Especially the German navy and the Italian navy are not, uh, are not that bad. So we're happy with this. We can confirm and exit. And uh, that's it. So as you can see we took a large part of uh, Europe under our control as uh, puppets. And, uh, and uh, Italy is uh, a puppet of uh, the UK. Now, this is the end uh, for today's video. This video is probably already quite long. Uh, the entire setup uh, and then World War II uh, is challenging. So the next episode though, it's very important. Uh, now uh, I know you're used to my uh, runs continuing, but the next part of this run is still going to be a country guide. It's still going to be very detailed. Uh, and I want to share this uh, little trick uh, that we are going to do. I don't want to give you too many hints, uh, but I would like you to guess what we are going to do. Let me tell you this. It's a good thing that Italy is a puppet uh, of the UK. And uh, we are not going to be friends with the Allies forever. So that's all the hints that I'm giving you. Uh, let's see if you can guess what's going to happen. Other than that, guys, uh, thank you for watching. So make sure not to miss the next uh, video, the next episode. And uh, if you enjoyed this one, uh, please do not forget to, to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really, it really helps uh, and it's rewarding for me. I put a lot of effort and time into these uh, country guides. I hope you enjoyed uh, this country guide. Let me know in the comments uh, what you thought about it. Uh, also, if you have any suggestions on how to further improve it. Uh, I think it's pretty well optimized, but there is always uh, room for improvement. Uh, and I will see you guys uh, in the next episode. Thank you for watching and bye bye.